Today, we're visiting the Health Design Lab, a part of Thomas Jefferson University's Sydney Kimmel Medical College. In its previous life, the space used to house an old bank vault, but today it's become a kind of creative playground for med students, doctors, and other clinicians. It's a place where visitors can take their ideas and inspiration and transform them into a physical form. This space is called the Health Design Lab and we use it to run our programs for our medical students for our uh, design thinking uh, program. The whole concept is to take an idea and turn it into a physical form. Space is powerful and it changes the way you think. And that intentionality of how you design your space will change how you react in that space. So, you know, everybody's so used to, in the academic environment, in the medical environment, to these big, you know, stadium style rooms where, you know, you have the one person you're supposed to listen to in the middle of the room and everybody else is supposed to be quiet and take notes. You know, you start to realize that that is not an environment that is conducive for creative thought. So the tables are just kind of spread around the room. Some of them have chairs. What I want is when people enter this space, I want them to have to set it up for their needs. Students who come through the Health Design Lab aren't just working on imaginary exercises. They've been tackling real issues in healthcare, targeting problems within the walls of the hospital and in the surrounding community too. Yeah, we can show you uh, the healthcare mapping project. So we're using a software called ArcGIS. Um, can you point to the side? This is the ER layout here? Yeah, this is the ER layout. Um, this is the A side okay. and this is the B side. Are you filming it? Yep. Yeah, so this is the map of the emergency department, and this is showing one nurse's entire shift, entire 12-hour shift. We make these points when they stop and communicate with someone, as in a patient or another physician or another nurse, or if they're doing an activity such as drawing blood, placing an IV, charting, um, and then we do that for the entire shift and we get this map that lays out everything they've done in with timestamps and location. So this is all this is all one person. This is all one person shift, yeah. This project is a collaboration between Jefferson University and a nonprofit in Philadelphia called Studio Ludo. There aren't many resources for landscape architects to use um, to really understand what sort of infrastructure to put into playgrounds um, that encourage people to use those infrastructures and to burn the amount of calories that people should be burning when they're utilizing public spaces. These are the tags that the hardware we install in the playgrounds detects. Um, again, it sort of pings these tags and sends information, uh, location, velocity, um, sends that information back to us and we're working towards getting even more biometrics like heart rate um, and transferring that data into useful statistics like caloric expenditure and things like that. These are all desktop 3D printers. Here, here's an example of how we're using it. So this is a mandible printed on, on one of these guys here. And so we had a conversation with our head neck cancer surgeons where uh, we're talking about how they operate on, on cancers of the mandible, where they actually have to physically bend titanium plates yeah. while they're in the operating room. So we were, we were talking and said, well, well why don't we uh, take a CAT scan, uh, uh, print out these mandibles, and then we could pre-bend the plates, and then autoclave them, sterilize them, and then, and then just do some finer adjustments in the OR and hope to reduce OR times with that. So this is a, one example of how we're using uh, 3D printing for uh, surgical planning. 